Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the rain that he is raining on his throne today. See, the Midas touch is talking about exhaust, but I'm going to tell you why I want to tell you and compare that to the Master's touch. You see, the Midas touch is talking about things in the past. And what this lady just did was cleanse her soul. And God wants us to be whole body, soul, and spirit. And when the Master touches you, there is no past. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God began to share with me last night in a dream. And it was so strong that it woke me up in a vision. And all I could see was the sons and the daughters of God that the creation was eagerly awaiting for. And God began to talk to me about giving honor to those that are serving in the body of Christ. Glory. And God began to speak to me and tell me how the responsibility had been put on just a few. And then God said to me, but I can change the whole world Amen. because one is a majority with me. Amen. Everybody that's gathered under the sound of my voice right now is especially chosen to be right here for this moment Amen. today. Amen. Now see, the Lord sent me here to bring you a fresh drink of water. Yes. Hallelujah. We went over to the governor's walk and we saw all them thousands of people. And everywhere I went, God had me go up to somebody and talk to them. Because see, I don't meet any strangers. Amen. And I believe God loves everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to share that because, because of His love, I am who I am today. Glory to God. And so I want everybody to know the same fervor that you had when you got saved is the same fervor that God wants us to have every single day of our life. Amen. I don't want you to get stuck in the mud. I don't want you to be in the quicksand because something bad happened to you. Now you look at me and you say, well, what happened to me? Well, there was a lot of things that went wrong with me. Even this morning, God was cleansing my soul. See, he began to talk to me. He said, you know, sometimes some bad things happen. He said, look at Hagar and Ishmael. See, Sarah or Sarai became, she became jealous. See, she became envious. And the next thing you know, this woman was pushed out into a desert place. Yes. She was dry and in a lonely state and she didn't have anything left to sustain her. And she didn't know what she was going to do. But all of a sudden, the master, the master sent help. Yes. He gave her direction. Yes. Did he not? Yes. He pronounced a blessing on her. You know, sometimes things happen to us in our life and we want to blame God and we don't understand what God is doing. I said, what do you mean by that, Lord? He said, well, look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. You think it was fun for his own brothers to attack him and throw him in a pit? Huh? Oh, you're talking about having some hurt on the inside of you. But Joseph humbled himself before the Lord. And he said, whatever comes my way, God intended. See, it's an attitude of gratitude that will always bring increase. Yeah. Amen. The attitude that don't have gratitude, it breeds poverty. Jesus. Lack. Jesus. Lack. Lack. See, you can't go to the Word and say, but my God shall supply my needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus if you're not walking in those covenant blessings. Because see, our God is the God of covenant and He hasn't changed. I'm telling you now, he hasn't changed. I'm telling you from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, it got dark on that day of atonement. And I'm going to tell you what happened when Jesus yielded up the Spirit. They didn't take his life. He surrendered his life for you and me. But I'm going to tell you what happened. All of a sudden, the veil of that temple was torn from top to bottom. And God gave us access right into the Holy of Holies so that we could be made whole body, soul, and spirit. We can't carry those things that bother us. This morning, the Lord began to convict me. I went to a graduation. And my brother had been in a, a critical car wreck. And because we'd cried out, in 1996, the Lord spared his life. But he was paralyzed from the middle of the chest down. And we went to graduation, my graduation. I went back and got my degree. While I was studying to get my degree, I had a, it was a Baptist, Mercer University, a Baptist college, and I had a Baptist 
preacher and teacher, if you will, he decided that the Red Sea was the Reed Sea. And he went on for about 20 minutes. And when he got through, I lifted my hand and he said, yes, sir, David. I said, well, wow, that's just the most amazing thing to me. I never thought about it that way. Because if the Reed Sea was only two inches deep and it didn't take much of a wind to part it, that's all right with me. But what amazes me is my God drowned all of Pharaoh's army in two inches of water. <laughs> well, well, you know what happened, right? You know what happened, right? That man got mad at me and he slighted me, so he gave me a B. It was the only B I ever made in college. See? And so I had, I had to walk in forgiveness. Now, that man never came to me and said, I'm sorry. He never came to me and said, I'm sorry. But see, love, the Word says, love does not keep an account of wrongs. So in order for me to be free, I had to forgive him. And I had to go on and I had to say, well, God, you want me to go through this. Hallelujah. For this is for your glory. Glory to God. So I give him to you, Lord. He belongs to you. Well, a few weeks later, he called me. He won't know if I want to work with him in his cabinet shop. See? But he never, never said, I'm sorry. See, we haven't been taught when we offend. The proper way to go back is to say, I was wrong. And I am sorry. Oh my goodness. So many things happened this morning that went with what God was telling me. I got this cold anointing. I had this hot anointing. Now I got this cold anointing. All of a sudden you put on CC. And all I could see in my spirit was an alabaster box. And all I could see was those that had persevered and endured. And all of a sudden I heard the Lord say, Nobody may know what price you paid for that all that's in your box. But the Lord said, I know. I know. So the cleansing that takes place in your soul is your perspective first is an attitude of gratitude Amen. that says no matter what I go through I'm going to give God honor I'm going to give God glory I'm going to give God praise because I know He's the covenant God and I know He's going to take care of me no matter what the situation is Hallelujah So as I begin to research and pray and fast and seek the Lord's holy face, I begin to see a cleansing in the body of Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 5 is a strong chapter about how we're supposed to honor those around us. You know? And I thought about, but I, what I thought about was see, see Joseph so amazing to me is all of a sudden he makes it as a, a sold slave. Hello? Jesus. He gets all the way down into Egypt and he winds up in whose house? Potiphar's house. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, you see, because of his attitude of gratitude, in Potiphar's house, even though Potiphar didn't worship the same God, Potiphar recognized that God's hand was upon him. Amen. And everything he put his hands to, he began to bless. Yeah. What's gone out in the body of Christ today, God said we become like a smuggish prig. Jesus. See? See, when I walked through the governor's walk yesterday, I began to weep in my spirit because I said, Oh God, if your house was as full as this mall, oh God, if these young people were dressed, oh, with the honor of God, what we could do for the kingdom. And you know what God said? We got to go get them. We have to go get them. When you was left out there alone, oh my goodness, the Father, the Father ran to you when you were a long way off. See? And He fell on your neck. Oh, God gave you a new robe, the robe of grace. Well, freely we have received, so freely we give. That robe of grace is for us to extend it to others. Joseph had lots of grace, didn't he? It looked like a horrible thing that was that was happening to him, didn't it? Mm. Abandoned. See, there's a lot of abandonment issues. Yes. What you think Hagar was going through and Ishmael? Mm. Mm. He spent all this time with his daddy. His daddy just taught him how to hunt, and all of a sudden, his daddy sent him away into the desert. Mm. What you think he felt like mm. Mm. as a little boy? My mother used to tell me I was just like my dad. 
So when she'd get mad at my dad, she'd say, I don't want you around me. You're going with your dad today because you're just like him. Mm. Jesus. See? Jesus. See, these are soul wounds. Jesus. See? These are soul wounds. These are things that we have to be cleansed of. We have to be forgiven of. That's right. See? Miss Mayo had a soul wound. Soul wounds are nothing different. A lot of denominations will say when someone says they're saved, born again, and they commit something wrong, like, well, they must not have been born again. Well, you see, we're three parts. We're, we're created in the image and the likeness of God. We're body, soul, and spirit. When Jesus comes in, He seals that spirit. The enemy or the devil and the fallen angels can't get in there. They can't possess that part of it. But let me tell you something. You've got a body and a soul. And there are oppressive spirits that would love to do just like they did with Peter, sift you as wheat. Yes. But the Word of God says Jesus has prayed for you Amen. that your faith fail not. He says in Hebrews, He ever liveth to make intercession for us. Yes. Now there are many in the body of Christ that don't have Joseph's attitude anymore. Amen. Okay, but because we have allowed the enemy to come in, which is our flesh... Mm. Oh my goodness. See, see, the strongest enemy is our flesh. It's our flesh. When, when you go over there to Governor's Walk and you walk through that mall and you see the dress code, okay, and you see the gold, okay, you see the bling bling, see, you know what I'm saying. Amen. You know, you see the dip and the dap and the, you know what I'm saying. Look at me. Look what I got going on. Well, God saw it before it got to that point. He sees it in every one of us before it gets to that point that point. Amen. Okay. Once your soul is cleansed though, you put on a different attire. That's right. Amen. See? Once you get born again, you have opened the doorway into a relationship of where God wants to put you in the parameter of His covenant blessings and give you everything because immediately Ephesians says that He seats you in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus. Yes. But you got to have some training. you got to have some disciples. You don't know. You don't know where you're going yet. You just got saved. Amen. But then you gotta you gotta fill your mind. You gotta renew your mind. You gotta wash. You gotta wash. You gotta wash your soul with the word of God. See? And as that soul becomes cleansed, that body puts on a different raiment, don't it? Oh my goodness. Then all of a sudden it ain't about me anymore. Oh, it's about him. Oh, it's about him. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. As long as I please him. Amen. Believe. Dream. Imagine. Faith. Hope. Love. Oh, my goodness. And I just now saw those. Oh, my goodness. Those are hanging in my little girl's room. But Anna just saw them. But I saw them when it came in. Because the word says immediately we believe we enter into that relationship. Yes. Okay? Glory. Yes. To dream, hallelujah, is an anointed gift of the Lord, believe it or not. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many people that, that, that don't dream a whole lot. And when they dream, because their soul's not cleansed, they don't sleep and they wake up and they have fear and they're downcast and they're downtrodden and you look around and you say, well, why did that person do that? Well, he's got soul wounds or she's got soul wounds. See, but God wants us to dream healthy dreams because he said in the last day I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. All flesh. He's God. He can do it. It's so funny to me. It's so funny to me that you go some places and they'll say, well, a woman ain't supposed to be a preacher. You go some place and they'll say, well, a man ain't supposed to have long hair. Well, let me tell you something. God's God and He can do what He wants to do. All I know is when I got over in the judges, I started following God and I realized that God could have known anybody He wanted to. And I realized that Deborah was a judge. I got over into Leviticus and I read the Nazarene covenant and I seen what God said that a razor should not come upon that man's head. God is going to do something different. Let me tell you something. You are that something different in your day and age today. John the Baptist was somebody different. Glory to God. They had never had any baptism. They didn't know what the remission of sins was and how to be cleansed from the water. They didn't realize that he was pointing to the living water, the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't know. They were stooped in tradition. Yes. Yes. I don't want to be about tradition. I want to be about relationship. 
relationship. I want to reach as many for the kingdom as I can. I don't want a new ring. I don't want a new car. I want to lead somebody to Jesus. I want a new soul. God brought a young man in our life 10 years ago. He recently got out of prison. He called on Saturday night. We went and seen him on Sunday. He's been eight times in the last 16 years. We're talking about soul wounds. And so we go see him. I was prepared beforehand Saturday night when I talked to him. I said, you had to let go of your envy, your jealousy, and you had to let go of your scandal on your abandonment issues. Yes. Yes. See, we need people in our life. Yes. We need accountability. Yes. And when somebody rejects us, it's a soul wound. Yes. It's a soul wound. And so I talked with this young man about this soul wound. We went down and we, we got ready to leave. And I said, well, I'm going to leave a few minutes early. I want to go get him a new pair of pants and shirt. And we, the closer we got to going, the Lord said, no. No. Why? No. Glory. Okay. Glory. Okay. So I listened. Mm -hmm. so my wife even asked me, said, are we not going to get Robert to change of clothes? And I said, no, we're not. Glory. We're not going to get Robert to change of clothes. Because God's got to be the one that changes his clothes. <laughs> And God said, if you let me change his clothes and you let me have my way, I'll cleanse him and I'll make him the disciple that I anointed him to be. Thank you, Lord. So we went down Sunday and we met and we come back and I sent a little email and Monday morning, his uh, cousin, his mother had already rejected him, okay? That's painful, that's so wound. So he goes over to his cousins. His cousin's out of town at the time. He's there with her husband. Okay, and they've opened up their home. They're ministering to the least of these, but Monday when she took him to report. See, when he left his mama's before he got to his cousin's, he smoked crack. Jesus. See, but as soon as he smoked it, he said, Oh God, what am I doing? And he ran and he went to his cousin. See, see he had already found repentance. He'd already found grace Jesus, from the Lord. Jesus. But she called me Monday morning and says, Oh God, I missed the mark. I feel so stupid. I've been so deceived. No, you got to let God be God. You gotta let God. He said Amen. that that we should bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. But He didn't mean that I physically get up under that because I can't carry the weight of sin. Amen. I can't purchase my salvation either. Amen. Amen. According to the recent statistics, that the smartest people in the world that are in the kingdom of God said it would take so many billions of dollars for each soul to be purchased if you put a dollar figure on it that it would be more than all of Solomon was worth and just for your information Solomon is still the wealthiest man that has ever lived on the face of the earth today thank you Lord Bill Gates hadn't got as much money <laughs> Wilbur Ross hadn't got as much money you know what I'm saying thank you okay now the funny thing is is I had already prayed, and I knew he was going to get favor. So after I was able to talk to my sister Karen, his cousin, we, we gave her some information about a ministry. But, but you see, God always placed somebody in your life. They'll, uh, there'll always be a pot for somewhere there to pick you up. They'll recognize the talent that's on the inside of you. They'll extend a hand of favor for you. Because one moment of God's favor in your life is worth more than you'll ever work and achieve under your own power. And that pot is always going to be placed in your life by divine appointment of the Holy Ghost. See? So this Potiphar in Robert's life was his parole officer who found uh, a ministry, and I know y'all going to laugh when I tell you this, the name of it is Meet the Need. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this, they don't receive any federal funding because it's mandatory that you have Bible study and they proclaim the name of Jesus. <laughs> because they said unless you get spiritual help, you're going back. Amen. Because the greatest ministries out there that help the least of these their rate is 22 out of every 23 return to drugs. Jesus. And eventually wind up back in Jesus. prison. Okay. But God said to me this morning, early this morning, before the sun rose, God said to me, my people are bound. My people are in bondage. We need a soul cleansing. Oh, we need to get a burden for the lost. 
We need to recognize that when we had no way, there was no way. God made a way. We need to realize that when we was in the desert and the drought, that God sent us living waters. And he sent us a river that will never run dry. Yes. And that river is Jesus. Yes. You want to fill up this church? Yes. Get out there. Amen. Get out Amen. there. Don't go out there with a judgmental attitude. Amen. After two days in Gwinnett County, a parole officer sought this place called Meet the Need, and guess what they did? They accepted Robert in there. So guess what the Lord told me I was going to have to do? Now, Camille knows how far it is. She saw on the way down here how far it is. Okay? Now, I'm not going to get this young man to make money. Amen. Okay? But God said, I want you to go get him for three weeks straight. I believe God's going to send him transportation now. So, it's 30 miles there. 30 miles back. Mm -hmm. Devotions for two hours. Soul cleansing for two hours. Prayer for two hours every morning. Mm -hmm. Work. And then 30 miles there to take him back. And 30 miles back for me. It's 120 miles a day. Mm -hmm. It says it was 120 in the upper room. Glory to God. <laughs> but it didn't take one in that upper room to stir up revival. Yeah. How is God calling you to stir up revival? What is God saying to you that you need to let go of? Who has offended you? See, we'd like to hold on to the ones that have offended us, but what about those we've offended? Amen. I love to give, brother, but I hate to receive. And, and that's not God's way. Amen. God said receiving and giving. Giving and receiving. I've heard so much talk about the seed and it being misquoted. That I laughed yesterday when she said, what about the scams and the charlatans that are online? I laughed. Listen, if God tells you to send a seed to somebody that says a certain amount that you need to do that and that you're going to get your miracle, that's fine if God tells you to do that, okay? And I'm not knocking that, okay? I'm just telling you that you can't buy that miracle. And I'm going to tell you that the greatest seed that you put on the inside of you is the Word of God. The Word of God will make everything right in your life because the Word of God is Jesus. It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Once you begin to renew your mind and put the word on the inside of you, you're able to take that sword of the Spirit. So for three weeks now, I have been discipling Robert. And the first night we got here, he called. I said, what are you doing, Robert? He said, well, I've been discipling here at the table for three and a half hours. <laughs> See, this young man is so full of the word. He is so full of the anointing of the word and able to teach. It's not even funny. I said, how many you got? Two? Yeah, brother, there's two here. I said, so y'all make three. Amen. See? But see, wherever you place sometimes, you don't want to be there. Robert didn't want to be there. He was trying to reject it. See? And I said, well, you're right where God wants you to be. You think Joseph wanted to leave his family? He was the favorite of his daddy. You think he wanted to leave? What about Ishmael? Mm, amen. What about Hagar? Mm -mm. Think about him. Think about the soul wounds that happened in your life and release them to God. Because unless we forgive... Our Heavenly Father can't forgive us. Amen. I said, Robert, you're right where God wants you. You're going to be there until your attitude of gratitude brings increase in your life and God lifts you up out of that miry pit. Hello, Amen. that horrible pit, that miry clay. Amen. See, it's the attitude of gratitude. It's what's in the heart. So after he discipled for three hours, see, now he's realized he's right where he's going to be and he's going to be there until what? Until he begins to say, God, thank you for my roof over my head. Amen. Thank you, Lord. See, and he started talking about this issue and that issue, and, and we do that too. Well, she's doing this, well, he's doing that, the facilitators. And I said, you know what? You got your hand in the wrong jar. Amen. See, that's between them and God. You see, the covenant that was between God and Saul, David respected so much, even though Saul was trying to take his life. Y'all listen now. Even though Saul was trying to take his life, that covenant that was between God and Saul, David left it between God and Saul because many times he could have took his life and he wouldn't take his life. Amen. See? So we have to understand that the things that, that come against us, we have to be prepared. How are we prepared? How do we become that disciple? Jesus said in his final hours, he said, the ruler of this world is coming. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But he has nothing in me. How could he say that? I'm going to tell you how he could say that. Because body, soul, and spirit was cleansed. Amen. See? And we've been given a charge from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 to read this chapter to all the brethren. 
I've never heard anybody do it. We were given many charges. We were given many tenets of the covenant, right? Many tenets of the covenant. Everybody looks at the powerful anointing of Samuel, but the cost that he had in his box was his whole life was dedicated from earth to the Lord. Samuel, not one word that he ever spoke fell to the ground. It was established. Amen. Okay? Now we can turn this around. We can say, oh my goodness, look at his first assignment. See, his first assignment was you got to tell Eli his house is out of order. Mm -hmm. The man he really knew his daddy said, you got to tell him your house is out of order. Mm -hmm. See? You talk about soul wounds. Well, why are, why are people running around here half naked? Well, because they're trying to get some need, some need met in the flesh. But guess what? The flesh will never satisfy you. Why is everybody trying to get a bigger paycheck, get a bigger house, get a bigger car, keep up with the Joneses, wear more gold? You know what? what why are they doing that? Because this is something that's in the flesh. Amen. Okay, this is something that's in the flesh. Amen. Okay, this is not a treasure laid up in heaven where moth can't eat and rust can't corrupt. See, the treasures, I want, I want you to really think about this now. See, I always try to tie everything back to Jesus because you see, Jesus, you want to know what he thought about wealth? He had a thief keep his treasury purse. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh, Jesus. You think he didn't know what Judas Iscariot was? You think he didn't know what was inside of him? The creator of all life. Yes. <laughs> he knew. What, what do you think about money? Jesus. Here, thief, keep this bag. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. See, see, our focus, see, our focus has to be so sold out for Jesus Amen. and so sold out to pleasing Jesus. Amen. As long as we please God, Rosalind, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks or says or does. Because as long as we please God, we'll be like Paul. We'll be able to say, in all these things, I am not moved. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. It doesn't mean that offenses won't come. Jesus said that, that offenses will come. But he says, woe to who brings those offenses. Yes. So that's why you want to always pray, God, never let me be offensive. Never let me bring an offense into somebody else's life. And forgive me, Lord, for those offenses I have caused. See? Yes. The soul wounds that happened to us, like me when I was a little boy and remembering the comments that my mother said, see, they cause you to put these things down on the inside of you and they begin to work from the inside and it don't work real good when things get on the inside and they begin to work. So you got to put it in from the outside. you got to put it in from the spirit, man. If you put it in from the flesh, that's from the inside. Now, it's going to cause you to have these thoughts that you shouldn't have. So you're going to have to bring those thoughts into captivity. Here I am down at graduation and my brother's Rex and he's done had a little accident. And somebody said, well, he really wants his mama. So his mama's got to go. So they left. They didn't even attend my graduation in college. See? Jesus. See? See, I, I, I was like a dog this morning wagging his tail smiling waiting on somebody to smile back and pet me. See? And you know what? I, I'm sorry. But you know what the Lord said? He said, I'm smiling. He said, I'm smiling, son. I'm smiling. Glory to God. Glory to God. He said, I'm smiling. Everybody needs love. Everybody yes. needs companionship. Yes. But if you're not getting it met first from the Lord. If you're not getting it first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But if you're not getting it first from the Lord, it's because you hadn't developed that relationship to the point He wants it. Amen. See, see, let me tell you something. He wants all of you. He don't want part of you. That's right. You can't step in a little bit. You can't get in just a little bit of water. When you come in under God's anointing, you better bring a towel because He's going to drop you in the deep end first. You ain't going to walk down the steps and get used to it. He's going to take you all of you, body, soul, and spirit. And He's going to cleanse you. He's going to cleanse you. He's going to bring you back up a new person. If any man be in Christ Jesus, if any man be in Christ Jesus, He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You want to be a new person? Be submerged in the Holy Ghost. Be submerged in the blood of the Lamb. And watch the cleansing power of Jesus Christ move in your life. 
Once you open that door and receive salvation, don't stop there. That's just the beginning. That's the doorway. You got an eye gate. You got an ear gate. You got a mouth gate. And, and, and listen, you got a heart gate. And I know I'm pointing to my head. Because what you don't understand is this thing is pumping blood. Ain't got nothing to do with the heart that the writer's talking to. The heart that he's talking to you about is the center of the brain on the inside where the spirit of the living God made you alive. It's called the heart of the brain. And that's the heart he's talking about. So when you get up in the morning and you begin to praise God, you put the word on the inside of you. You begin to speak the word, pray the word. Your eye gate begins to see first thing in the morning. When you begin to speak it, your mouth is the other gate. Then your ear hears the gate. Guess what happened? All those gates become closed to the world and the flesh and the enemy. And they become open to God. And then you become a living epistle yes. like Paul. Yes. Glory, Glory to God. To God. Glory, to God. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Nobody wants to wash any feet anymore. Amen. That's true. I want to tell you something. God gave me something and this is for you, sister. When I saw those two shoes yesterday, it was all I could do to keep a straight face. Because you see, I went to the Lord and see, before I come to see you, see, the Lord said, I want you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I want you to read them three times in less than 30 days. And that's a little over nine chapters a day. And that's just in the New Testament, okay? And I began to see things from there about the cleansing that was taking place. See, the traditions of man will not get you to heaven. Amen. The relationship to Jesus will get you to heaven. Amen. The traditions of man said Jesus couldn't stop by that well of Samaria and minister to that lady. Because tradition had it, you couldn't talk to a lady. Amen. And his disciples come up, but they dare not ask him what he was seeking. See? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. God's always going to do something different outside the box. Outside the box. Why? He's God. He can do that. He takes the wisdom of this world and confounds it. To the wise, he shows himself wiser. Wiser. See? So when you get a word from God, keep that word inside. Because God wants to increase your belief. Because, see, the seed of faith came from birth. It came from heaven. See, there's a, there's a, there's a point in the womb where the fetus is developing. And there's a movement and there's a stirring that doctors to this day with all their technology cannot pinpoint, cannot understand unless they're filled with the Spirit where it comes from. Amen. Because it's the spirit of life when God sends the spirit of life. Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I heard somebody say, I can't get no lower. And I was reading in the Word. And Jesus said, the lowest part of the earth is the womb. Mm -hmm. And you go read it in Psalm 139. Yet when I was in the lowest part of the womb, He knew me. Yes. He knew me. Yes, Lord. So I said, Lord... He comes in. He has his last supper. You think about the, the, the prophetic word. Go up there. There's, when you get to the city, there's a man going to be carrying a pitcher. You just follow him where he goes. And when he gets to the house where he's going and you try to come in the door and he turns to you and say, where's the room that you got prepared for me and my disciples to eat the Passover? We just blew right through the day of atonement. And God said, I prepared a room. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. I prepared a room. It's already ready. Hallelujah. I said, what's that mean, Lord? You, you took off your outer garment uh -huh. and, and you got down with a, a basin and you began to wash the feet. I said, Lord, what kind of spiritual connotation? I, I said, Lord, I know it's, it's, it's more to it than just watch, washing the dust off. He told him, he said, if you'd already had a bath, you'd clean all over. Peter said, you ain't going to wash my feet. He said, if I don't wash it, you won't be a part of my kingdom. Amen. I want you to think about this because I know this body right here is fixing to have a foot washing. Okay, but I want you to remember that when you're washing somebody else's feet, you're not the one washing their feet. Amen. Jeez. Glory to God. Glory. He yes. said the spiritual connotation, he said the spiritual meaning behind this is when you're washing somebody else's feet. It's me washing the feet because I'm washing away everything on the journey that has caused harm in the body and the soul and the spirit. That's powerful. That's powerful. On your journey, wherever you're at, you may think some of the things that have happened to you have been so atrocious. 
And God doesn't make little or light of that. But you watch what you say when you say the devil did this. You watch what you say. Because it might be God preparing you for the place He's got to take you to. See, that boss you don't like. That taskmaster you call him. <laughs> that slave driver you call him that you don't like. Or maybe you can't find a job. Maybe you're looking for a job. Maybe you're looking for a job. Well, you might be doing the wrong thing. He said, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things be added unto you. Right. Well, well, let's fill up. I've got bills to pay. Yeah, well, does you focus on the money? Does you focus on the bills, or does you focus on Jesus? Right. Is your problem a big problem, or is your God a big God? Wait a minute. Let's get this thing right now. I'm not living my life and walking through this earth based on man's worldly economy and the limit. I've never seen a dollar bill in any vision or dream I've ever had from God because God somebody and God uses it to pay the streets with. I'm on God's economical standard. We have to get to the point to where we're willing to let go of everything and seek the master. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's been times in my life I was riding down the road the other day and Teresa and my wife said, are you okay? I said, no, I'm not. I said, God just reminded me when I was finishing the sheetrock in the house and one of the guys that was with me had taken the top boards off so we could get the sheetrock down behind the steps and, and them top two steps was gone and I stepped off in that stairwell and, and the man was down below me and he was standing there. When I, when I got up and I looked at him, his eyes was as big as a silver dollar and he said, there ain't no way. Hey, no way. You see, I turned and flipped an unknown way to him because, see, he couldn't see the hands. Oh, glory to God. He couldn't see the hands that was holding me up. He couldn't tell that my father had caused me to rise high above my enemy. He lifted up my head. He couldn't tell that I'd been in the secret place. And I was abiding with the father. He said, I'm going to tell you something. You, you, no man flips like that. See, I should have fell straight down and hit my head on that concrete. The devil done tried to take me out that way in 1982. See, 19 times in my life, the devil's tried to take my life. And I want to tell you something. He can't take your life. He can't take your life. My life, my times, oh Lord, are in your hands. My times, oh Lord, are in your hands. I don't know what your need is today, but God knows your need. As I began to pray and seek God last night, he began to talk to me about the simple spirits of the carnal man. Mm. That means we're still drinking milk. Mm. And we hadn't graduated to the meat of the word. You see, jealousy, envy, wrath. See, all these are fruits of the flesh. Amen. See, all these are fruits of the flesh. And as long as these fruits are evident, we're not going forward in God. He wants us to crucify the flesh. Amen. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but the life I now live. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's not my life. It's not your life. It's not my way. It's his way. Amen. Be careful of the soul wounds. Amen. James said this little tongue up here could start a big fire. Yes. He said a little bit small rudder moves a big ship. Yes. See, moves a big ship. You feel rejected. You feel abandoned. You feel hurt. You feel like you've been through some things. I've got good news for you. Amen. We all have. Amen. All of us have. It's not what you are enduring or what you have endured, but it's how you overcome. Amen. There's only one way to overcome. That's through the blood of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Be prepared for the battle by putting on the whole armor of God. Gird your loins up with the belt of truth. They're not the ten suggestions. They're the ten commandments. It's not a list of do's and don'ts or no's, nays and no's and don'ts. It is a loving parameter through which God establishes a difference between you and the world. His blessings will fall on you because you're a covenant keeper. When you keep the covenant of God, you show God you love Him. Who did Jesus say was the ones that loved him? Mm, amen. The ones that kept his commandments. Amen. He said, they, they come to him and they said, well, your mama, 
your brothers and your sisters there outside, they want to talk to you. <laughs> They're seeking you. They want to speak with you. And he looked around at those that had been obedient to the Word of God. He said, well, these, these right here, these are my brothers and my mothers and my sisters. These are. That's what he said. See? See, he recognized that he had to always put God first. Always put God first. There's a, there's a surrender. There's a surrender. There's a surrender that takes place, and it's the surrendering of I. Once you put I back on the throne, you can receive an offense. You know, you'll find the most courteous people in church. Oh, no, no, that's not my seat. You can have it. But you go up there and get in line at the grocery store. You let somebody come up there and cut in front of you. And how are you going to act? How are you going to act? <laughs> in the spirit this morning when the sister was dancing and, and proclaiming a dance, my mind went back and I thought, oh, my goodness. I run around. Dancing like I was something else at a concert <laughs> to the world. I know that's right. <laughs> but when I come in the house and go, I ain't gonna get that boy. What's somebody gonna think about me? Listen, you better be thinking about what God's thinking about. Oh, God. <laughs> See, when I went up to that young man yesterday, he had a cross on. I said, uh, "Excuse me, what's that mean?" Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought it looked good. <laughs> I said, he said, do you know what it means? I said, absolutely. And I started telling him about Jesus, the Son of God who died that he might have life. And his mama says, oh, the boy knows Jesus. I said, well, I want to see how bold you are for the Lord. He said, I just don't understand all this other stuff. It's from another religion. I said, no, ma'am. It's a rosary. Amen. It's from the same faith, a different denomination. Amen. Because you see, no matter what title you put over the head of the place, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died for your sins, He was buried in resurrection, came forth on the third day, God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. And she says, oh yeah, He knows that. But you see, He wanted to know what the rosary meant. I said, well, let me describe it to you this way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to flip it around the other way, okay? Because this guy came from AT&T AT and he won't know if I want you verse. And I said, no. I said, well, but do you know Jesus? He said, huh? I said, are you a Christian? He said, well, I'm Catholic. I said, well, do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Amen. And that he rose again the third day? And they seated right ahead of the farm? I said, if you confess that with their, your mouth and believe in your heart? And he said, oh, yeah. I said, well, come on in. I'm Catholic, too. <laughs> We can't look at the titles. Amen. We can't look at where we've been and what's happened. That's, that's the minus touch. It's talking about a muffler. Amen. That stuff coming out of the backside, it stinks. <laughs> There's only one thing that can cleanse it, and that's the blood of Jesus. Amen. Only one thing that can make you whole, and that's the blood of Jesus. He wants us to rise above where we're at by being a covenant keeper. Here Joseph is in Potiphar's household. God's blessed him immensely and all of a sudden a woman comes on the scene and she wants him. Yes. See that eye gate? Mm. See, that, see that eye gate? Eye you gate. see that eye gate? Yeah. Jesus said that we need to have a single heart and a single eye. Yeah. Amen. See? And all of a sudden he winds, winds up in prison. What happens in prison? It didn't matter. I want you to notice something. That because of his attitude and gratitude and his love for the master, it didn't matter where he went. It didn't matter how low it seemed. It didn't matter what standard it was. It didn't matter who rejected him. It didn't matter who didn't love him. His God loved him, and that was enough. So everywhere he went, God raised him up and exalted him because God said, I will give grace and exalt the humble. Yeah. Anytime you think it's your right, I just came back on the throne. Amen. So he goes in there and it's a test. It's a trial. You read the word. You find this out. You read the word. Amen. The thief that had actually stole the piece of jewelry from the Pharaoh was the one that put the stripes on Joseph's back. Joseph was in charge of that man. Jesus. Joseph is a prototype of Jesus. <laughs> The stripes that Jesus took were that you might have divine health. Okay? 
That the only way you're going to get divine help is if you get cleansed body, soul, and spirit. Amen. When you get cleansed body, soul, and spirit, you're going to have health mm -hmm. and wealth. Yes, yes. And what else? Salvation. Amen. Health, wealth, and salvation. To him who orders his conduct aright, I will show him my salvation. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show him my salvation. Yes, Lord. If there's any real people in here that really need a helping hand from the Lord, I got good news for you. The Lord is still on the throne. This earth and the fullness thereof still belong to the Father. He's got a message for us. He says, take the healing, take the wholeness that I've given each and every one of you and go forth out there and turn this world upside down. Do something different. Jesus was a man that went on the scene and they marveled when he began to open his mouth because he did something different. The law said that woman was supposed to be stoned. She was caught in the act of adultery. She was supposed to be stoned. That was the law. Amen. But they, they messed up. They brought her to the one that fulfilled the law. <laughs> see? See? Don't get stuck in your mind about the things that He's already forgiven you. Accept His grace. Give His grace and go forward and light a torch under everybody you go. Stir the gifts that are up on the inside of others that are around you. Begin to pray for others. Begin to give to others. Look at that homeless man on the street. Make him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if you don't want to give him no money. And take it to him. Amen. Take it to him. Because Jesus said when the, when the piety of, of the religious people got in front of Him, and they wanted to enter in. He said, well, I don't know you. He said, I was sick, in the hospital, in prison. I was cold, naked, and I was hungry, and I never saw you. But the ones that he let enter in, he said, when you did it to the least of these, my brethren. See? He hadn't called us to get on this platform of the smuggish prig with judgmentality. The, the judgmental mentality has got to go. Amen. Amen. We have to remain humble before our God. See, not one of us can purchase our salvation. None, None of us can. Yes. He said, greater is he that is in the world that is inside of you. Greater is he that is inside of you than he that's inside this world. Amen. He said, in the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Who's on the throne of your heart? Who's controlling your eye gate, your ear gate, your mind gate, and your mouth gate? Who's controlling that? You are. By putting the Word of God on the inside of you. Be refreshed. Take a drink of cool water. Enter into His rest. Start uh, realizing that in that rest and peace of the Lord, He can accomplish more through you than what you can do on your own. You've entered into a battle, but it doesn't belong to you. The battle belongs to the Lord. He's called you to walk in victory, not in defeat. He's called you to walk in the victory that He's given you. Not a battle place before you. Glory to God. The triumphant entry take place as the journey of a legacy is fulfilled when every human being accepts Jesus Christ, the life and the journey of the real legacy, Jesus Christ, is fulfilled and it begins anew. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Hallelujah. I'm drunk in the spirit. Somebody will have to read for me. You want to read for me? Okay. This is the day of the Lord. This is an exhortation for us in the body of Christ today. First Thessalonians chapter 5. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes to as a thief in the night. You have to pray my eyes. For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, but you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. Yes, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Mm. 
For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the hope of salvation. For God, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus yes. Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are also doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love Amen. for their work's Amen. sake. Amen. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good for both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. He who calls you is faithful, you, who also will do it. Yes. Brethren, pray for us. Yes. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. There may be a Robert in your life. See, see, God's called Robert to be my armor bearer. And until my armor bearer gets strong and takes his position, see, there's somebody lacking in our team here today. There may be a Robert or a Roberta, she may be, Amen. in your life that needs a helping hand to get back up. Amen. There may be that person. You are a majority with God. One is a majority with God. Yes. Rahab and her family was the only one that was saved at Jericho. The covenant was established between the spies. They told her if that red rope that she used to let them down the wall to escape was in the window when they come. See, they knew they were coming. Do you understand that the walls of Jericho were 21 feet across? Do you understand that you could put about seven chariots on top of them and ride around that wall? Wow. It's kind of like the Titanic. They said, God can't even sink this. They said that city was impenetrable. But I'm going to tell you something. The lady of ill will, if you will, who had been judged by all society. Mm. Oh, watch this. Because, see, I can't call her that other name because God told me not to call her that. If she was redeemed and found in the lineage of Jesus Christ, yes. Amen. why am I still calling her by the name from her past? That's this is right. a good thing now. It's a good thing God said. Right. See, Rahab was, was, was redeemed and, the, and her family was the only one. And that same cord that she used to get them out was what she put in the window. It was a red scarlet yes. thread. God. See, Jesus is that red blood. scarlet Amen. thread. It's the blood. It represented the blood of Jesus, the redemption of all mankind. Amen. Don't get caught up in the flesh. Get caught up in the Spirit and see what good and mighty things God can yes. do for you. He wants to reveal Himself to you, manifest Himself to you. He said, greater works than these would you do because he went to the Father. Yeah, man. So we have, to, we have to really enter in, press in, not be downtrodden. Remember, the body, soul, and spirit must all be cleansed yeah. of anything that's, that's in there that's hindering you. God, he's going to bring them up. He's going to bring them up to you. Yes. 
And you have to make the decision. Am I going to lay that down or am I going to hold that? Well, who in this life had not faced a lot of things? All of us have to. Amen. Bitterness comes from holding on to it. Amen. And it breeds lack and poverty and loneliness. So we're going to let go of it and we're going to let God cleanse it and we're going to be about His business. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now Pastor Rosalind. Lord.